Oh, what's going on gamers? Here we are back with some more Outriders and today is pretty much just going to be going over what they have just come out with and that is pretty much the fundamentals of damage control. So if you're wondering what's going on with your damage and what the basics are and mechanics are behind it then stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always for all things gaming, for all things Xbox and of course a lot of the latest and greatest on the way, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. Now for today, if you are looking for an action packed extravaganza, then click off now. Unfortunately we've got quite a few things to go over, but it will involve me reading off of kind of their scripted stuff, so we'll be jumping straight over to Reddit and I'll be reading over what they've brought out. If you're worried about mitigation, if you haven't got a clue what's going on, but like a lot of us with I don't even know if I don't even know if they 100% know what's going on but either way we're going to go through what they brought out and let's kind of kind of see if it does tend to tally up with what we're going through right so here we are and what I'm going to do is pretty much just read it out to you guys and girls and then we'll kind of go over what we think right so here we are and what I'm going to try and do is keep this as brief as possible whilst also kind of covering everything if there's any bits that I can skip to kind of make it a little bit shorter for you guys and girls I definitely will so obviously it goes through the core mechanics resistance armor shields nodes yada 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 so what does it actually kick off with and it looks like it's resistance so what does resistance actually protect us from? Resistance is a mechanic that serves to protect the player character from incoming anomaly damage. In practice, this means all non-physical attacks. All enemy anomaly abilities and elemental attacks are counted as anomaly. The perfect example of such an attack are fire grenades from shotgunners. What does resistance not protect you from? Physical damage completely ignores resistance, therefore all physical attacks will bypass that stat. Pretty much as we know, basically bullets, all melee, everything such as that doesn't get covered by resistance, that's obviously by your armour mitigation. How does resistance scale? Resistance reduces the incoming anomaly damage by the given percentage, so 30% resistance is same as damage reduction. Nice and easy, pretty much self-explanatory. An in-game example is a brood mother uses anomaly eruptions. It's an area of denial ability that forces the character to move. A hit from this deals 35,941, that's good to know so we can kind of figure that out from there, that's nice. If the player has 50% resistance they will take 17,970, so basically 50% equals half, yada yada yada. If the player has 30% they will take 70% of the hit at 25,000. Right, that will make sense, pretty much standard as we know. Does resistance have any cap, which we will have no further effect? Resistance is capped at 85% incoming damage. Now, I don't think you've got to worry about that too much. It will be really hard to hit that cap, and I don't think you'll need to anywhere near, to be perfectly honest. If you've got at least 30, if you can go up to 50, that's even better, but at least 30 is pretty much mint most times, as long as you've got some regen. So next up, and we're going over to armor. What does armor protect you from? Armor is a stat that serves to protect the player character from incoming physical damage. In general, this means all melee and ranged weapon attacks in the game. What does armor not protect you from? Pretty much exactly the same as what it just covered, it's not going to protect you from any anomaly attacks. How does armor scale? Armor value is used to determine how much physical damage should be reduced. It is compared and scales accordingly to the armor reference value during calculation. Uh, from that, as far as I can tell, it just basically means you know on your actual stats up the top, it will refer to that. So if it says 50% mitigation, it will mean you're going to get 50% kind of mitigation, as I just said, and you'll only take 50% of the damage. Reference value is the expected armor value on a certain level, world tier or CT. At CT 15, a broodmother deals around 50k damage with a melee attack. Wow, that is a big hit. That kind of goes to show you why you're getting absolutely smashed around if you're going pure DPS. If the player armor is on par reference value, they will have roughly 30% damage reduction. If the player armor is lower, then the damage reduction will be lower, vice versa for higher armor and damage reduction. Basically, it's just saying the higher your armor rating is and the more mitigation, the less it's going to do. Physical damage reduction displayed in your stat screen shows the physical damage reduction against the highest unlocked level enemies. 
right i get that right so it basically shows you what it is for the ct15s if you're on ct15 this means that if you progress from one challenge tier to the next without adjusting your armor value your physical damage reduction may display lower does armor have any cap above which it will have no further effect Armour does not have an upper cap, but physical damage reduction derived from armour is capped at 85%. Ah, so that's for anyone who was doing the kind of dodgy stuff that I saw where they were, what was it, using uh, hacking and such, and they were making themselves have just like a million armour or 100 million armour and such. It was always capped at 85%. So for them saying that the game was completely broken and that it wasn't working as intended, I did think this in the first place that there would be an upper scaling it just means that 85 percent is the most mitigation you can get you're always going to get hit by that last 15 otherwise you'd just be invincible so that makes complete sense and next up and we've got shields what does shield protect you from both types of damage are blocked by the shield if the damage is anomaly based the damage the shield takes will be based on the resistance stat calculation explained above if the damage is physical based it will use the armor what does shield protect you from? Both types of damage are blocked by the shield. If the damage is anomaly based, the damage the shield takes will be based on the resistance stat calculation explained above. If the damage is physical based, it will use the armor value. I don't use shield much in this. That's something completely new to me. I didn't know that. So it revolves off of both of them. That's, that's good to know actually. If I ever make a trick start, I definitely, definitely will bear that in mind. How does shield work? The best way to describe how shield works would be to treat it as an additional health bar, which absorbs all damage first until it depletes, and only then damage is reduced from the actual health points. See that's strange, in the demo I honestly thought when I was getting hit by the first boss's skill move, it was tearing straight through my health and completely bypassing my um, shield, so I wonder if they've changed that mechanic then or if I was just remembering it wrong. Shield should behave exactly like the HP bar. HP bar except that they will deteriorate over time. It will also deteriorate faster when out of combat. The maxed amount of shield is equal to your max amount of HP. Increasing your HP will also help increase the max amount of available shield. Important as shield gains are always based on percentages, boosting your HP can have a significant impact on your shield values. Where nobody has been using any HP whatsoever near enough, that's probably why everything's not quite as good with shields. Maybe that's why Tricksters were struggling a little bit. So maybe now if they wanted to, they could chuck on some HP stuff. But then their damage would go down and they're all about doing that massive crit damage. So I'm not sure how that's going to work at the moment. Last week's change to health granted by armor should therefore also have boosted the max amount of shields in a similar way. Ah, so it's just given the overall health that it's boosted without them actually needing to worry about that. So it means that they should have actually got a kind of internal buff in themselves, which is quite nice, meaning that hopefully they've got a little bit more survivability on the trickster now. Does shield offer any additional protection? Shield prevents characters from being affected by knockbacks and interrupts. Really? I didn't realise that either. I honestly didn't, right? I, I haven't played enough Trickster, apparently. The Trickster shield has an additional 5% extra damage reduction that reduces final damage taken. This is a unique effect to this class and no other class benefits from it. Next up, and we've got damage reduction nodes and mods. Some skill tree nodes and gear mods provide an effect that reduces incoming damage from enemy type by X%. percent. Enemy type means a certain enemy class, for example, elites. The final damage calculation step is multiplying damage through modifiers and one of them is damage reduction. For example, reduces incoming damage from broodmothers by 30% will reduce final damage taken from the broodmothers by 30%. Pretty much the normal, we, we pretty much know all of that. Phoenix mechanics, uh, yada yada yada, that's exactly the same as it means. So basically the Phoenix mechanics, it's just telling you that when you get your kind of extra life as such on the Pyro and Devastator, they just kick in when you die, you don't actually die, you come back and then you have a kind of time before it's reset. Status effects versus resistance, armor and shield. Damaging status effects are anomaly damage based, therefore they are moderated by resistance and not by armor. Damaging status effects deal normal, deal normal damage to the shield, moderated by resistance. How does healing and health regen interact with each other? With other mechanics. The moment that a character's HP reaches zero, that character dies. That right there is definitely the best bit of info I've seen. Like, 
I think we know that, hopefully everyone knows that bit. The chronological order of incoming damage healing determines if the character will be able to benefit from certain protection effects before hitting 0 HP. Basically, from what I can gather from that, as long as you're pulling stuff off and getting either a regen or getting a skill off before you reach HP, before you reach 0 HP, sorry, it just means it will take effect. If you've hit HP 0, then you're absolutely gonna just be dead unless you've got another extra life from the phoenix. If there is healing, shield, regen incoming before the next damage instance, it will be taken into account. Once the HP reaches zero, yada yada yada, you are completely popped. Right, so effects applied by the enemies, how do they work? Weakness, status effect which reduces the outgoing enemy damage by 33%. 33, why did I think it was 30? Okay, all right, that's that's new to me. Maybe I just missed that bit. This effect can be applied to player characters by enemy attacks. These effects are used by enemies on by high world level above nine and challenge tiers above four. Vulnerability, status effects that increase damage taken by 15%. This effect can be applied to player characters by enemy attacks. These effects are used by enemies on high world level above nine again and the tier above four for CT and stuff. Basically, if you're anything like me, check when you do die, when you think there's something dodgy going on. It always seems to me that I've got that vulnerable going on. I don't know if there's some kind of mitigation that I'm not factoring in, but it seems that's the only time I've ever had kind of dodgy stuff go on. Maybe it's just down to luck or maybe I'm not factoring it in right. Other survivability mechanics. Primary death prevention. This prevents players from dropping below 30% of health due to incoming damage. When triggered, it will block all damage for 1.2 seconds and prevent hit reactions. This mechanic has a 120 second cooldown. This mechanic will only trigger and go into cooldown when a character reaches 30% HP for the first time, while the mechanic is not on cooldown. That, to me, I unless I'm missing something, so basically what they're saying with that is that you've kind of got an internal cooldown that if you're lucky and you've not been hit to that kind of health under 30%, you've got a little chance to survive, but then it goes on cooldown for two minutes. That's good to know. So that might be why sometimes you're surviving and other times you just seem to pop really easy. So if it's on that two minute cooldown, you're not going to really factor that in without knowing this. That could be something to actually watch out for. If an attack would take a character below 30% HP, this mechanic's effect will only take the character to 30% HP and the remaining damage will be disregarded. So basically, that's the kind of thing that's making it so that you shouldn't get one shot, but if you've already had that chance, it looks like it's got an internal kind of cooldown of two minutes. So that really, really does explain at certain times when you're like, hey, I've not been, I've not been given a chance because I've been one shot here, it may well kind of explain quite a lot, I'm not going to lie. That would have been saying, good to know a long time ago, that one. Secondary death prevention. There's a secondary one. This prevents players from dropping below 10% of health due to incoming damage. When triggered, it will block all damage and hit reactions for 2.1 seconds. This mechanic has a 60 second cooldown. This is... Yeah, it's more complicated than I thought. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know about any of these mechanics. This mechanic will only trigger and go into cooldown when a character reaches 10% hit points for the first time while the mechanic is not on cooldown. So again, you have got an internal cooldown. First one's at two minutes, the next one is at one minute. If an attack would take a character below 10% HP, this mechanic effect will only take the character to 10% HP and the remaining damage will be disregard disregarded honestly these two things right here they're 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 quite technical you can't factor that into anything basically if you've gone down to 10 percent hp then you've got 60 seconds before you can go back to that because then you will get tapped that's strange that is a strange mechanic in game but i suppose it's to try and give you a little bit of extra survivability I know there's going to be a lot of people out there saying that this definitely ain't the way that they've been playing as there's a lot of people saying that one shots are still happening. But that does, those two things there, to me that explains quite a few things because nobody's really been factoring that in, myself included 100%. Next up and we've got spike damage protection. 
If a single hit takes more than 65% of a player's max HP, its value is limited to just that 65%. So again, that's the one-shot mechanic, meaning the maximum they can do is 65% of your damage at one time, no matter how hard they hit. This spike protection value increases on high world levels and challenge tiers. It's 65% up until tier 9, and then, wow, so it goes up to 85% by challenge tier 15. So that would mean it would activate the first one of the death prevention, but it wouldn't activate the second one. This means that enemies on higher tiers will be able to do a higher max damage per individual hit to players before a spike damage protection applies. Don't forget that the initial damage output of enemies also scales up with each tier that you progress through. This, intentional, this is intentional as higher tiers are designed to challenge players to assemble a complete build that includes adequate protection etc and master enemies behavior and attack patterns. Spike damage protection has no cooldown, so it counts for every hit. However, certain boss attacks can be very deadly regardless of the additional protection mechanics and should therefore be avoided or dodged whenever possible. In-game examples are the Chrysaloids. Breath attack deals multiple hits per swipe. Ah, so that would just kill you straight out, I'm going to guess then. The Broodmother's Anomaly Surge deals damage in quick succession. Anomaly Surge, is that the blue line one? I'm guessing so. Another one I would definitely have put on there would be Moloch. Moloch is just ridiculous sometimes, but maybe maybe that's just me. And and the um and the poison bugs, the what are they called the Strix. Yeah, that should be on there. <laughs> These final three mechanics are intentionally hidden in Outriders, as with many other such secret mechanics in game. The original version, but the original vision behind the designs is for them to subtly help the player while also ensuring that players do not become reliant on these mechanics when playing the game. Making them too obvious would lead to an over-reliance on these features and an under-reliance on the game's focal survivability mechanics. Right, that's pretty much all of it, but yeah, knowing that would have been helpful from the start, but I don't know how you would factor it in. You would understand why you've died sometimes, but being able to kind of work around the fact that you're getting what down to your first or second kind of gated can't die moment yeah i don't think you'd be able to factor that in at all but yeah i'm sure i've taken enough of your time that one was obviously a little bit of a boring one but just let me know what you guys and girls think for myself i'm glad i know a few extra bits in there there's some bits that i didn't know anything about for example the shield on the trickster and obviously those mitigation things and kind of guarding from death. Whether or not I think that covers everything, I don't entirely know. I've had a few instances where I I almost definitely have not been within those parameters. But again, let me know in the comments what you guys and girls think. Some of it is definitely good to know though. As always, for all things gaming, for all things Xbox. Take care. I'll see you on the next day.